Hey guys, today I'm going to give you three recommendations of shows available right now on Netflix that you might not have heard of. Samurai Gourmet is clearly what happens when the Netflix algorithms figure out how popular Jiro Dreams of Sushi was and all of the other eating shows. It's about a friendly old man who recently hit retirement and finds meaning in life by trying out all sorts of foods that he always wanted to try. And he envisions an old samurai spirit that's watching him or that's also part of himself. It's a little bit confusing, but it's a brisk 19 minutes per episode. There's a very light story that brings him to different food locations. And we get these immaculate, beautiful shots of the whole cooking process of whatever he's eating for that day. During these food ventures, we'll cut to the samurai who will do things more boldly, like it's what he aspires to be. This is a very laid back and easy show to watch, maybe while you are eating, because you're definitely gonna be really hungry when you're watching this. It's a very well shot uh, Japanese style show. The characters are kind of over the top, but our main character is very easy to watch. He's like your friendly older neighbor, and there are actually some touching plot points. All in all, it's something pretty different and refreshing. And it's definitely food porn, so it's, yeah, you'll, you'll definitely get into it. The second show I wanna recommend is The Returned. The Returned is a French show about a bunch of dead people that return back to their town for unknown reasons. So kind of zombies, but not really zombies. They don't remember what happened to them and the town must deal with the repercussions of all of these family members and neighbors all returning unaged. So in the center of this, there's also a mysterious young boy who's even older than most of the other returns. There's a lot of secrets and a lot of messed up things that were buried and now they are getting unearthed with all these people. We focus on a different person and their history each episode. One of the main storylines involves twin sisters and one of them passes in an accident. When she comes back, she's still 14 and she sees her sister and that's when you know something's up because her sister's <laughs> What do you do? You know, how do you deal with it? This show deals with so many super serious themes, how to cope with grief, how to cope with loss, violence, what's the meaning of life. All of this is touched upon. I think what makes this show really good is it's actually really well paced and you're really engrossed in each of these characters' lives. Because they are all focused in one town, they ultimately all have these intertwining relationships that you find a little bit more about and that go deeper than you think. This is a really well done show and I think it treats the audience with a lot of respect. It doesn't get preachy. We really just focus on the struggles of the people who are all well thought out and have really intense journeys. This is a show I really wanna talk more about so maybe I'll do a longer video about it in the future. Finally, we have The Magician's Code. The Magician's Code is a show that I watched a lot of when I was visiting my grandparents in Taiwan because it was always on for some reason. Uh, it was just always playing at HBO or some random channel. When I was much younger, I thought magic was the coolest thing in the world. So when I saw a show that would reveal its secrets, of course, like I was just watching every time I wanted to know. This is about a masked magician who shows us a trick and then how it's done. Apparently he's breaking all sorts of unwritten codes and rules about the magician's code, but it's for the viewer. So it's fascinating to see something broken down and explained. It always kind of seems obvious once you see the mechanism or the trick, but it doesn't make it any less magical. In fact, I think it gives me more respect for the magician that they could come up with this kind of contraption. The magician and his assistants are all very melodramatic in the performance of the trick almost like they're dancing around while someone's narrating the trick in the background. It's a little bit cheesy, but I, I think it's really watchable. It's really interesting because you're gonna figure out how they do it. The narration is very clear and he walks you through step by step about what the magician wants the audience to see. And he also clearly guides us through how the trick is done. And we see it again, but from the perspective of the magician. And that's so cool to me. So those are my three shows that I think you should check out and they're available right now on Netflix. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you wanna see more Netflix reviews, Amazon Prime reviews, and just video essays about films in general, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.